first off, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out to be a part of Moby Fest this year. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys for having me. It was uh, super dope. It was like uh, great to be in that room with you guys and have that energy. I'm glad you guys got to be there since there was no audience. And you guys were uh, audience. <laughs> this year, we wanted to be very intentional with being really involved in each performance. Mainly that was Laquan's idea. Uh, he was like, you know, this year we should go out and travel to all of the different cities to capture the artists' performances and then also think about what exactly would they like to incorporate with their performance. One thing with these artists' talkbacks that we want to do is kind of dive into a little bit of the wellness piece uh, within our community. So I just want to ask you, so what does community mean to you, like in general, and the importance of it? Um, I think that community for me is a support system, like an empathy link, people that have a shared common experience and like vibe and way of thinking that can support you because existing is hard. <laughs> um, and so community is that thing that makes you feel less alone because you have people that can speak to the same lived experience as you. I agree. I, I definitely agree. And I think more than ever in a year like the one that we've experienced, you know, due to COVID-19, I feel like I know I personally understand the importance of community or just the importance of the right community, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the right amount of space, the right amount of time and tension that we give out. You know, so how has that been for you, like um, your artistry in the midst of COVID? Um, I think because of the many lanes that I take, mm -hmm. um, I allowed myself to just wholeheartedly embrace the parts of my art that I could and mm -hmm. not dwell on the things that I couldn't do. Um, and so, like, I did step back from stand up because we couldn't do stand up. So there weren't shows. Yeah. So, um, I like took a step back from like auditioning because like we couldn't film shows. So like right. <laughs> I did what I could, which was right. Cause I had the time and the space to do it. Uh, and so that was very fruitful to be able to use the time that I had um, in a way that did allow me to still have an outlet, which was also fortunately was my money source as well. So I was able to continue to like be in writer's rooms yeah. to finally have the time to like work on the projects that I didn't have time to do because I was always doing stand up. I was always like driving to meetings. Yeah. So I, I think it was a very like glass half full kind of situation where I was like, before the pandemic, all I did was ask for free time. Yeah. And so when I got it, I was like, well, I shouldn't shit on the universe <laughs> giving me the time that I asked for. So like, well, let me do something with that time. Right. Yeah. Very important. I know I, it's, oh my gosh, talking about like stepping outside of lanes and stuff. It, it definitely gave me the opportunity also to really explore different avenues and kind of put my energy into other places and um, but I would love to know, how did, tell us uh, a little bit about the beginning of your journey with, uh, with acting and uh, stand-up. What was the first beginning of that? Uh, how did that start? Um, I had a stutter, I like, still kind of do, and I had um, speech therapy for a long time. <clears throat> and I realized that the first time that I stopped stuttering was when I like, was in this play. And I was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> uh, and then like years later in high school, I was a football player. And then I quit playing football to join my school's dance team. But at the time I was still in the closet and I was like, everyone's going to know I'm gay. I got to quit. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> so then I quit my dance team. That is I, such I, a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> and then that's when I found improv and sketch comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the directors of the improv and sketch comedy were also the directors of the musical. So they were like, oh, you should just like act. Like, you should perform. And I was like, oh, cool, I guess. Like, I, like, I, I remember consciously thinking that like, um, when I was blindsided, like like the movie, two white ladies were like, little black boy, you can do it, you should act. And I was like, oh, thank y'all. Uh, like, I didn't know at the time that like, I could do that. I thought acting was just like, I don't know, for like special people. Yeah. Um, and like growing up on the South side of 
sh- Chicago, I was like convinced that the way to get out was like math, science, like you have to like be as smart as possible. Mm-hmm. So seeing that like creative, that I did have a creative avenue kind of just opened me up to possibilities that I didn't know. So then I went to school for acting um, and, and I got cut my freshman year. Because it makes sense. I was a 17-year-old black boy from the south side of Chicago who didn't trust white people. And then I went to DePaul where I was the only black person. And they were like, be open and vulnerable. And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Right. Know, y'all. <laughs> and so they were like, Dwayne, you can't do this. And I was like, you're right. That makes sense. I have been very uh, closed off from y'all. Um, so then that's when I uh, started working at Second City. And I was working on Sketch. And from Second City, I did stand up and I was on like Wild and Out and then got writing jobs. So it just kind of snowballed from there. Yes, that's really, that's really exciting. And first off, I want to say like, congratulations on everything that's happened. Uh, thank you. Like, we truly um, appreciate your talent. We truly appreciate your time that you've invested in um, Moby Fest. And I would love to speak a little bit even about uh, your experience of being in the writer's room. I know um as a fellow artist um representation matters you know in spaces and it's very important to be in those rooms to you know help white people tell black people stories (laughs) to be completely honest you know so um can you tell us a little bit about your experience of being in the writer's room and the importance of representation yeah so the experience differs greatly depending on the show so my very first writing job was in late night. I was working on the break with Michelle Wolf. Um, and that was my very first writing job. I was the only black person on staff. And that's when we, um, I, we, that's when Michelle Wolf wrote the White House Correspondence Center that year. And I was able to write for her. And I remember there was this joke that went viral that was specifically, um, that was about calling Sarah Huckabee Sanders and the uh, Uncle Tom of white women. And I remember like, when I pitched that joke, I, I consciously was like, oh, nobody else can literally pitch this joke. Like, this is a joke that stems from my point of view specifically. Yeah. And I saw like what an asset I was. Mm-hmm. And it was like the opposite of imposter syndrome. Where like, I was like, y'all can't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Lived experience. <laughs> right? Uh, and so I feel like that kind of helped me just like switching my like mindset to be like oh i'm just gonna like look on the things that i can do versus like how hard this is yeah Uh, and then when i was doing narrative stuff that was like a whole different thing um and that was very difficult as well because i was the only black person at every writing job i had until my fourth one Wow. And then that, and then I started, my very first black boss I ever had was Amber Ruffin on the Amber Ruffin show. Oh, and, yeah. and it was, and just the difference of what the experiences was being able to create without the filter of whiteness mm-hmm. was drastically different in the amount. And then it made it very clear to me how much energy was being used specifically just to like navigate whiteness. Yeah. And so when I was in a job where I didn't have to do that, I was like, oh, I be- it felt like I was like writing with like ankle weights. Oh, wow. So then when I was writing for Amber, I-, I was able to like pitch and think and write and create in a way that was just like so freeing mm-hmm. where I didn't have to like double check like, oh, who is my audience? Like, who am I writing for? Mm-hmm. Uh, she hired me to think as myself. And so I was able to pitch sketches where I'm like, hey, I want to do a sketch specifically talking about City High song, uh, what would you do? <laughs> and she was like, absolutely. And that's not a thing that I think I could have pitched to yeah. like, a straight white man. He would have been like, girl, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, absolutely. Like, I, I remember I wrote a parody song mm-hmm. to Blue Can Trails, Hit em Up Style about stimulus checks. And <laughs> it murdered in the room because we all got it like we were like we know what this is we have this shared uh pool of like cultural references that just made the creating the creative experience so much more freeing yeah Um, and i'm just so grateful that i had that opportunity to like work with her Mm -hmm. and 
And I was like, is this what like my white counterparts feel all the time when they're just right, like, right. surrounded by whiteness? I'm like, is it that easy? And then that only made me think like, well, then why are y'all still bad at it? Like, mm, I'm dope. Right, right. Why is the story? <laughs> they're not adding up still. Like, what's happening? It's like, imposter syndrome never felt it. Never. <laughs> Who for what? I'm like, for here? Right. Like, this is so easy. No. <laughs> like, you can't convince me to think that this is hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's really you know hard being black and gay. <laughs> right. In a room full of. Exactly. Like, right. Um, you know, and so and that even leads me to um, like another question. So what advice do you have for up, um, like writers or actors who are wanting to be in this field, but kind of find it really difficult, you know, of being the only person of color in those spaces? Oh, get a therapist? <laughs> uh, no, but it is like, it's a very hard and difficult thing to navigate. And I think my life specifically has set up a certain amount of lived experience to where I walked into these spaces without fear. And so I'm able to like move in certain ways that I'm just like, I don't really care. I'll risk it all. <laughs> like, right. Okay. <pardon> <laughs> uh, and so, like, I think that fearlessness has been very helpful, mm -hmm. but I've also had to be very careful with, like, how to use it. And I think, like, being Black and gay, like, it, it is, like, an intersection that is sometimes, like, very difficult to know, like, how do I use this yeah. in a way that's advantageous but like that's been my whole life has been like okay i'm gonna turn up the gay a little bit because like that's gonna like make you less nervous of my blackness but then once you hire me it's gonna switch and i'm gonna say nigga a lot <laughs> so it's just like really like navigating like how like right. like, like who do they expect me to be and who can and how can i present myself in the most authentic genuine way without like terrifying these white people <laughs> right. but like still being very transparent and being like this is who i am because that's something that i feel very truthful about and that's something that me and my mother had to have a conversation i have a conversation about because earlier in my career she would like basically say like oh like maybe you should be as like openly gay because like homophobia is still like very rampant and it could stop you from opportunities and i was like oh no ma'am right I don't want to be in spaces that are bad. So if it is homophobic, I would like to know first. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't want like, to be blindsided by being like, oh, I got a job and then I get there and they're racist and homophobic. Like, clearly that's not a space for me. Right. And I'm all about just like finding my lane, finding the people that really vibe with me. Mm -hmm. And so if we can just like get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, so that's the advice I would say is like knowing what you want and then moving without fear and moving with confidence and being able to say no to dictate like what you want because if you let other people tell you it's going to be terrible because this industry is terrible <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad industry <laughs> there's like a lot of pros but also it's very bad <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> which is why you know i love that you began with you know get find a therapist you know find a positive outlet of an individual that you can talk to that you can you know an unbiased opinion to where yeah. you can just get out all of those feelings and so i really want to know so let's uh i'm setting up a, a scenario okay so you've had a crazy busy week you're filming you're going to writer's room you have a moby interview <laughs> that you're doing <laughs> you know so it's like what what does Dwayne do to kind of press pause and um reflect or do some form of self-love what does that what does that look like for you i mean the way i smoke weed and stare at clouds <laughs> is truly too much. Talent. <laughs> like, <It's a> talent. <laughs> I like stare in at clouds. I stare into space. I listen to music constantly. Like I, that's, those are the moments that I feel like the most like at peace is when I just like literally just turn my brain off and I'm just like, Oh, look at a cloud. That's beautiful. There's just like music playing. There's a breeze. <laughs> just like, yeah. I just don't. Cause like so much of what I do is using my brain in very like specific calculated ways because like plot character like you're just constantly analyzing characters so so and it's like i do that for myself as a person as well to be like who am i like who am i now i'm changing like i'm always processing stuff and so to counteract that i just smoke a lot of indica and try to make my brain not work <laughs> <laughs> Which works. It's very, <laughs> you know, it's, 
I, I, I mean, <laughs> it's been great so far. And, right. I just like, and then, like, once the breeze is done, I'm like, ooh, yeah, it's getting a little chilly. Then I go inside. And then I'm like, all right, time to get back to work. <laughs> kind of press play again. Like, I, I totally believe that because uh, I know for me, like, writing is something that I, um, I released a poetry book in 2019. Um, and that was my first time ever, like that, that book was based on, you know, just a journal that I captured of uh, like, just trying out mental health, you know, like, well, trying out, well, trying to find positive ways to cope with my mental health. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was actually, quick story, I was, it was like, I graduated from college in 2015. And so um, a friend of mine at the time, um, she, passed away um like last year but um um she was like you know it was the last semester she was like um she could tell I was overwhelmed she could tell I really didn't know about like what I was going to do after college you know because I always said that like my parents set me up for like school 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 but it's like right when I it was time for me to graduate I was like what the fuck do I do now <laughs> yeah, you're like, like, school's like, over like who right? am I is that school yeah. Like, yeah um and so she was like you know what I'm just gonna get you this journal and I just want you to write I just want you to just get it out because I overthink and um you know, sometimes that's a good quality, but sometimes that isn't so good when you're constantly analyzing yourself or if you're in a field like television and film, you know, and you're auditioning or you're submitting scripts and, you know, right now this season is just full of no's, you know, like um, how do you cope in the midst of that, you know? And so it was, it was definitely a beautiful gift um, that I didn't see um, I think in the beginning, I was like, I mean, a fucking journal, like, really? <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I want to, like, what? Like, like you, you making me do work? <laughs> right? like, I'm graduating, and you want me to write journal entries every morning. So, like, in the beginning, I didn't see the value in it, but I just got to a point where I was like, you know, okay, I, I think, I guess I've tried everything this way, so let me just try something new, you know, and be okay with what that journey looks like, be okay with uh, stepping outside of my comfort zone, being okay with being vulnerable, you know, um, it was, it was a lot for me to learn that vulnerability wasn't a weakness or being quote unquote sensitive, you know, isn't a weakness, you know, and it's all about finding that value within yourself. So I truly appreciate you for mentioning therapy and to anyone that's watching, you know, this conversation right now, um, you're not alone. You're, you're not, you're never alone, you know, like there is always someone out there that loves you and appreciates you and sees you. And if right now isn't a good season for you, you know, like reach out to someone and just, just reach out, just text somebody, just call somebody and let them be on that journey with you. Um, but Dwayne, I truly appreciate you so much. I, likewise, I, um, like truly likewise. <laughs> thank you so much for um, your kindness. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for uh, your willingness to be of support to Moby during this journey. Like on behalf of the entire Moby team, we truly appreciate you. We support you. Um, we believe in you. I, I'm sending nothing but positive vibes of wealth, generational wealth, positive energy, yeah, peace. Fuck it up. <laughs> yes, all that your way. You know, um, you have a, a community behind you that truly believes in believes in you, and I appreciate you for being someone's voice. You know, like someone's looking at you saying, "Wow, because of him, you know, I can do it." So, I'm I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much Thank for you, you. for your love with Moby. And I want to say the same thing about you guys, because there was a moment like last year mm -hmm. um, where like I just had this like, so like as like a young black man, like growing up, there was like this lack of like black gay men, period. <laughs> um, <laughs> they just weren't there. Yeah. So <laughs> there, I felt this like burden when I like started to like create, to like be that for like little me. And I remember I was watching that Netflix show, uh, Styling Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and like I was like, and I was watching it and I started crying. And I was like, why am I crying? So then I had to like process it and I like went back. And I was like, oh, for so long, I thought that like I was on a fight like by myself mm -hmm. to be like, I need to like prove something to like the younger me. And then like, 
I just was watching that and it was like, oh no, like there's like a, a slew of gay black men feeling the exact same thing. So when you guys reached out to me, I was just, just like, yes, 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 I will uh, be my friend. Like, <laughs> like, I just, yeah. So thank you guys for all the work that you've done because I do think it's very monumental. Uh, and that's why I am very team Moby because I'm like, yeah, I do what y'all want. Cause like, I, it's very important to me what you what y'all like represent like what y'all doing and it's i think it's invaluable and i'm down to do whatever y'all want <laughs> thank you so much like thank you again like that means that means the world to me and i'm sure everyone on the team so we really appreciate you and i hope you have a beautiful peaceful rest of your evening um thanks to those of y'all that are watching thank you so much for being in this space with Dwayne and i and um yeah, we hope that y'all have a beautiful and peaceful time as well. Thank you again so much, Dwayne. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>